Hello, my loves. Welcome back to the Lavender Lifestyle Podcast. It's Eileen. Today is a solo podcast, and we're going to go over the eight levels of creating your dream life. So as I reflected on my life, I recognized that there are different stages that you go through in this journey of creating your dream life. So this is not to say this is the only definition or this is a scientific way of looking at it, but it was just based on my personal journey and the reflections that I made. But I wanted to share it today because it might help you guys put things into perspective. Like if you recognize that there are different stages or different levels, then you realize that you don't have to compare yourself to others. You don't have to compare your level one to someone's level five or level eight, right? So I just like to share this concept today and hope that it can help you open up your perspective and maybe give you more insight on what level you're at and whether you want to go to the next level or whether you enjoy the level you're at right now. I mean, everyone's life is different and this journey is yours to decide what you want to do with it. But this is just an extra resource. By the way, this is actually going to be the last episode of the season. We're going to take a little winter break and then return with the podcast on March 24th. So mark your calendars. Once it's spring, the Lavender Lifestyle Podcast will return. And this time when we return, the podcast is going to be bi-weekly instead of weekly. So we're going to post every other Sunday instead of every Sunday like we've done up to this point. And this is because I'm creating more space for myself to work on other new projects next year. And it's, you know, I like having this winter break so that we can reflect on the past season, improve things for the next season, improve our flow, book new guests, and just plan out everything. And then the bi-weekly is literally because I really want to keep balanced <laughs> with my life. As I'm adding new goals and new projects on my plate, I don't want to add it on top of my current plate, which I feel like is already pretty full. So I've decided bi-weekly is the way to go. I, in the past, I have taken like an entire year off of the podcast. And after doing that, I, I really do miss doing the podcast. I miss meeting and learning from the guests. It's my favorite thing. Like one of my favorite things is just to learn from all the different people that we bring onto the podcast. And I also love sharing it with you guys. So yeah, so hopefully we continue this journey at a slower pace, but still continuing nonetheless. So during this break, make sure that you go ahead and listen to any episodes that you've missed. You know, we have a catalog of about 250 episodes for you to enjoy. So I bet most of you have not listened to all of the episodes. Go ahead and go back and review any of the ones that you've missed. And also, if you haven't already, definitely help us by leaving a podcast review. It literally takes just a minute, but it makes a huge impact for us. So if you haven't done that yet, make sure to give us your review. And lastly, if there are any episodes that you loved from our podcast, please share them with your friends and family so that they can enjoy them as well. I'm pretty bad with promoting the podcast. I, you know, we post these episodes weekly and sometimes I forget to even share them on Instagram. So I don't know. I'll try to be better about that next year because we have such good episodes. It's just that I I don't know. I always forget to share it. So if you can, and if there's anything that you love, help us out by sharing these episodes with the ones you love. All right. So today let's talk about the eight levels of creating your dream life. And like I said earlier, these are based off of me reflecting on my personal journey. There are definitely different stages of your dream life. And I guess knowing that there are different stages, it makes you feel better with comparing yourself with others. Like you don't want to compare your level one to someone's level 10, right? So recognize that everybody is on this journey at their own pace and we're all at different stages of this journey. And also these stages overlap, right? Like it's not like they're clear cut, but it'll help give you some perspective recognizing these different stages. So today I'm going to go over each stage in detail, and I'm also going to share about my personal journey going through that stage, just to give you guys some perspective. But again, everyone's journey is different, and some of you might 
skip some of these stages. Some of you, these stages might be really short. For some of you, these stages might be really long, right? There's no, it, it's it's not like each stage is equal and you graduate every year. No, it's not like that. But there are different levels and I'm just going to share them, share my story, and that's the best that I can do. Apply it to your life as you will. <laughs> okay, so the first stage, I call it waking up. <laughs> so the first stage of creating your dream life is waking up to this game of life. And it's you can see it as going from unconscious to conscious. And for me, this happened around 2011. And that was when I was in college. I was a junior, uh, probably around junior year in college. And this is really where you start to question your life. You start to ask these big questions like, why am I doing the things that I'm doing? What's the point of life? What's the purpose of life? And it's, I call it like going from autopilot to having awareness of yourself. Literally, I would say up to that point, my life was lived on autopilot. I was a child. I, I did what kids did. I went to school. And in general, I just felt like I followed the flow of society and all the expectations that were put on me. I, I followed and did as I was told. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that because when you're young, you really don't know. You don't ask these big questions. You don't have an existential crisis, right? So the key to this shift from unconscious to conscious, from autopilot to awareness, I would say is recognizing that you have a choice, recognizing that you have control and that you have power over your life. This was like a aha moment for me. <laughs> I was like suffering, stressing myself out, doing good in school, graduating from high school, trying to get good grades in high school and college. And then there was a point where I'm like, what's the point of this? Why am I stressing myself out? Why am I working so hard? Like, I didn't understand my why. I didn't have my own why. My instructions came from top down. It came from my parents. It came from family. It came from teachers, the syllabus that you get when you start a new class, right? I literally just, before that point of recognizing I have a choice and recognizing I am in control of my life, I, I was literally living at the whim of external forces. And a lot of people do live that way. And, and this is not something that is a black and white shift that once you have this awareness, you're completely in control. No, this is a, it's, it's the beginning to wake up era. It is a journey of untangling yourself from external forces. And that is, I don't know, that takes, that's a journey, right? It, it's not black and white. It's not a switch that goes on and off for most people. So as I said, for me, this was 2011. It was in college. And the reason why I woke up to this was because I had to figure out what I wanted to do in life, what career to go after. And that was the question that stumped me because life up until that point, I was given a direction. I was given like, here's the class. You got to get an A in this class. Here's how to get an A. Here's the homework you have to do. Here's the test you have to pass. And it was like, manageable, right? <laughs> like I just did it. I followed the instructions and I lived life up to, up to the point where I had to make a decision for myself. And when I had to make a decision for myself, that was the point where I'm like, huh, <laughs> I've never like, what? Huh? I was just so confused and so lost. And it was terrifying not knowing what to do. It was terrifying not having the answers to everything. And of course, I, society was pushing me towards a certain direction. Yes, my parents wanted me to like get a job and go in a certain direction. And I still had those external force, forces. But for the first time, I started to question, like, what do I want? What do I want out of my life? What do I want to do? What makes me happy? And oh, I... I don't have to listen to what people are telling me. I don't have to do what my peers are doing. I literally don't have to do any of that. <laughs> it was literally just like a wake up point, right? And uh, thankfully, during that time, I had the opportunity to study abroad. So I went to Milan, Italy for five 
and a half months ish. And that was amazing for me because I allowed myself to get out of my environment because usually it's our environment that influences us so much. It's, it's, it's becomes the fabric of who you are when you're, you grow up in an environment and that's all, you know? So anyway, I had the opportunity to like, take myself out of my comfort zone into a fresh environment where I had nothing that influenced me in my past life. And I could think for myself. I could literally be independently thinking and reflecting and journaling. And that's where I started to ask these big questions and start my self-discovery journey. (laughs) Really ask, what do I want? in my life. So in the stage of waking up, what you need in the stage is a new perspective. This is a stage for self-awareness. This is a time to ask questions, be open-minded and not like try to unlearn everything that you thought you knew. This is a huge stage for unlearning and putting yourself outside of the constructs of the world and the life that you used to know. And like recognizing there is another perspective. There aren't so many perspectives that you can use to look at your life and to look at the world. It doesn't have to be one perspective, one story. It could be so much more. The potential and the possibilities open up so much in this stage once you start to realize, oh, why I don't have to have that belief. I don't have to have that thought. Why did I think that this is the only path for me when life and the universe is infinite? right? So that's what you need in this stage is unlearning and to be able to put yourself in new perspectives, open-minded, all the stuff that I said. So, So that was the first stage. And for each stage, like I mentioned, I'll describe it, share my personal journey and share what you need in this stage. Time for a quick break for today's sponsor, Shopify. New Year season means workbook season at the Lavender Shop. And for the past five years, we've been proudly hosting our shop on Shopify. <coughs> Shopify is the global commerce platform that helps you sell at every stage of your business with their all in one e commerce platform. Shopify helps you turn browsers into buyers with the internet's best converting checkout, up to 36% better compared to other leading commerce platforms. Through Shopify, we've been able to reach customers from all over the world. I love how easy the interface is to use and how they organize data to show you how you can grow and improve your business. Shopify powers 10% of all e-commerce in the US and powers millions of businesses of every size across 175 countries. Sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash TLL, all lowercase. Go to shopify.com slash TLL now to grow your business no matter what stage you're in. Shopify.com slash TLL. Moving on to the second stage, which is very important for creating your dream life. The second stage is having a dream, having a vision for your ideal life. Most people, I would say, have a dream, right? You have an idea of the things you like, the things you want, I I know there are some people who literally have no idea what that dream is, and that's okay. As you go through life unlearning and seeing things from new perspectives, as you learn about yourself, eventually you're going to develop and recognize your desires and you know, you're going to know what you like and what you don't like the more you learn about yourself. So having a dream, even if it's blurry, is the second stage of your dream life. Because once you have an idea of what you want out of life and who you want to become, then that becomes your compass. That becomes your North Star to guide you in the right direction. And it's okay if it's blurry because I've talked about this metaphor of you driving down a foggy road. You don't have to know what's 10 steps ahead. You don't have to know what's like the the 10-year goal or the five-year goal. All you need to know is like what's immediately in front of you and then steer accordingly, right? right? So it's okay to have an idea of what you want, but no idea how to make it happen. That's the stage two. It's having a dream and then knowing that you want to move towards that dream, but everything else is confusion. <laughs> like, that's okay. That that was me from that 2011 to 2013, 2014 probably, is like, I knew what I wanted, but I didn't know how to get there. 
And I remember that just being one of the most frustrating things about life when you have this feeling that your life could be amazing and it could be so much better than what it is now, but you have no idea how to get there or what it takes to get there. There's no step-by-step syllabus. There's no instruction manual. That was so frustrating for me (laughs) because then it means you have to figure it out. And then that means it's so scary. There's so much fear in that journey because there's so much uncertainty and so much unknown factors, right? But this is what you need in the stage. Let me tell you that what you need to move forward and the keys to like start moving towards your dreams in stage two. Number one, you have to believe that it is possible. Whatever you wish for yourself, whatever your dream is or your vision, you have to believe that it is possible and that it is possible for you. And that's why we talk about how important it is to have real life examples, right? We, we, it's so important to see examples of people doing this in real life. Like this person achieved this dream, that means I could do it too. And this is so key for minorities. For example, growing up Asian American and growing up as a woman, you get so much empowerment when you see someone that looks like you or has a, you know, comes from the same background as you doing something amazing because you're like, oh my God, like if they can do it, I can do it too. She looks like me. She came from where I came from. If she can do it, then I can do it. And that's why it's so important to like see examples. And if you have a dream and you don't know any real life examples of it like happening, like do your best to find the next best thing, right? Sometimes you might be a pioneer. Maybe you will be the first to do this thing. And that's totally okay. It it is harder to do that though. It's so much easier once you see someone else do it, then you're like, okay, it's possible, (laughs) right? Like going from impossible to possible. Okay. So that was the first thing that you need. The second thing that you need is to believe in yourself. Obviously you have to believe that you are capable of achieving this dream. And in order to believe in yourself, you have to have confidence. You have to believe in your abilities and your capabilities. And this is a huge internal work that you have to do. Like most people have a dream, but maybe deep down, they don't believe that they can do it. Maybe they doubt themselves. Maybe they they don't think it's in the cards for them. They think that, I don't know, whatever limited them in their mind truly keeps them from achieving that dream in real life. So it's so important that you have to be able to believe in yourself and believe in yourself fully. And this is so key because when you're doing something that is maybe out there or risky, a lot of the times the people around you won't believe in you. So you need to find the strength and the courage to figure out how to believe in yourself even when nobody around you does. And so to recap, number one, believe that it's possible. Find real life examples, as many as you can. And number two, believe in yourself. So with those two things, then you can move on to stage three with success. So moving on to stage three, this is the exploring and testing stage. So I call this open-ended action. And for me, that means taking action without like having a clear goal, right? Taking action just to try things out, taking action to learn, to explore, to discover. You're learning about yourself and you're learning about the world. So this stage of life is really important. And most of us go through this in our 20s, basically. You're literally like, you don't know anything about the world. You don't know much about yourself and you learn through experiences. And so this is the exploring and testing stage. A lot of it is trial and error. You're going to make a lot of mistakes. You're going to fail and you have to be okay with that. So this is the stage where you're learning what you like and what you don't like. You're learning what works and what doesn't work, right? This is where you start to understand yourself, who you are, like what you have, your gifts, your talents. Maybe you start to understand your tendencies, your habits. Are there any bad habits that hold you back, negative mindset, all of these things. And then you also learn about the world. This is your experience going into the real world, learning about how people are, maybe learning how to set boundaries with people, learning how the world works, learning cause and effect. 
So this is an extremely important stage because this is the stage where you are essentially building your worldview, you're clarifying what exactly it is you want because you don't really know what you want unless you go out and you learn, you experience and you try. And then with experience, you're like, okay, now I know. Now I know. I thought I wanted that, but I don't think I really want that. I want something else instead. Or this didn't turn out the way I thought it would turn out. This is the reality of it. And so it's learning about reality and getting super, super clear of what you want to focus on, what you want to create out of your dream life. So for me, this was 2012 to 2014, probably lasting longer than that. But it was after graduating, I didn't get a corporate job, no nine to five. I decided to just pursue and try out all the things that I was interested in. So I was working freelance. I was doing marketing, worked at a food festival, video producer. I was pursuing music. I was acting. I was auditioning for all these things, literally just like throwing things at the wall and seeing what would stick because I had no idea what was actually going to take me to my dream life. So I had to explore and learn about myself, learn about the world, what I liked and what I didn't like, what I want and didn't want to be able to get more clear on my path. So my goal during this time was to figure out how I could make a living doing what I love. Like I wanted to do something fun, fulfilling, and creative while making an income. And I also wanted this path to give me my ideal lifestyle. So my ideal lifestyle included, I wanted time freedom and location freedom, meaning I wanted to not be on someone else's schedule. I wanted to work whenever I want and be able to work from wherever I wanted. I didn't want to go into the office and do the nine to five because I tried that in college through internships and hated it. (laughs) So I knew, okay, let me figure out something else that can give me the freedom to work whenever I want, wherever I want, be creative and feel like I'm doing something that makes some sort of positive impact, right? So those were my criteria. Your criteria might be different, but it's good to have at least, you know, based on your dream and your vision from stage two, you should have some sort of criteria of the direction that you're trying to go. And then stage three is you figuring out the clear path to reaching that vision, reaching that destination. And during stage three, you're also like implementing the immediate actions that relate to your dream life. So small things like like daily habits, like, okay, maybe in your dream life, you want to do yoga, you want to journal every day, you want to meditate every day. Like those things don't, you don't need to wait to do those things. You can start to implement them now. So during stage three, like whatever you're clear about what you want in your dream life, this is where you start building that lifestyle, building those little habits because it doesn't have to be career focused. Like you can already start building your ideal lifestyle now. But at least for me, career was a big part of it because that for me was the big question mark. That for me was what I wanted to explore. Someone else like might be in a place where their career is pretty clear. They know what they're doing to make money, but maybe they're exploring their hobbies. Maybe they're exploring their habits and dream lifestyles. And so the exploratory phase for them might be, okay, let me try these 10 different hobbies and see what I like. So I hope you can see how these different levels might apply differently to different people based on their circumstances. But for me, career was the question mark. And also something I do want to note is that a big part of creating the foundation to your dream life is having a abundant income because nobody in their dream life is struggling with money, right? So obviously you have to have enough money, ideally an abundant amount, like more than enough that you don't have to worry about in order to truly live your dream life. So for me and for a lot of you listening, money and building a source of abundant income is going to be a big part of your dream life because once you have that source, then it's a large enough bucket to pour from, right? You can create more possibilities and opportunities out of that. So what you need in this stage three exploratory phase is curiosity. You need a lot of patience and you also need 
openness. So just to be open-minded, to be open to new possibilities, new opportunities, because maybe in the stage is where you discover something completely like new, something that you never even considered as a possibility. This is a fun stage because anything is possible. And I it excites me because the world is your oyster and go out there. Like this is your chance to explore, see what you like. Because if you don't take the time to explore, then you're only limited to what you know. And the truth is, what you know is very limited. Like there's so much more out there in the world, so much that you don't know that you don't know. (laughs) So the beauty of the stage is being open and allowing yourself to explore and to discover what the world has to offer. Time for another quick break. The holidays are here, which is perfect timing for today's sponsor, One Skin. With One Skin's revolutionary approach to tackling skin aging at the source, you can wrap up 2023 with a gift of radiant and healthy skin for yourself or your loved ones. One Skin products are powered by the revolutionary OS1 peptide. This proprietary peptide is scientifically proven to target aged cells and reverse the biological age of skin by several years in their groundbreaking research. One Skin just launched their mini bundle which include face and eye topical supplements, body lotion, and cleanser, which all come in a cute travel bag. I've been using their products daily, and I especially love the eye cream for keeping my skin hydrated during the winter. One Skin is the world's first skin longevity company. One Skin addresses skin health at the molecular level, targeting the root causes of aging so skin feels and appears younger. It's time to get started with your new face, eye, and body routine at a discounted rate today. New customers get 15% off with the code TLL at oneskin.co. That's 15% off oneskin.co with the code TLL. The new year is approaching, and now is the best time to invest in your skin. Age healthy with one skin. All right, moving on to stage four. Stage four is focused action, doing the thing. So this is the stage where you've done your exploring, you got super clear about what you want, you got super clear on the path. Like, okay, now I know clearly this is what I want. This is the path that I would likely need to take to get there. Like you have a pretty good guess. You have a pretty good idea of what you need to do. And all that is left is to take action and do it. So this is the time where you are focused. You are focused towards a direction because you know where you're going. You're working super hard. You're doing everything you can to get it up and running, essentially. So, you know, this can vary depending on whether you're starting a business, maybe you're going to med school or doing residency, or maybe you've landed your dream job and now you're working hard to prove or establish yourself. Like this is the stage where you're like, okay, I know what I have to do and I'm going to work super hard to get it. Because the path is clear. The path is laid out for you. And all you have to do is like take your steps, right? So for me, this was roughly 2014 to 2018. This was when I started Lavender. And once I started getting positive feedback from my videos, although it was growing very slowly, but when I say positive feedback, I mean people's comments or emails that they sent to me. Like I started to see, okay, this could be the path that can take me to my dream lifestyle because it was creative. I could work from wherever I want. I had all those freedoms that I wanted, like time freedom, location freedom. It was creative. And I felt like I was making a positive impact. That was big because previously I had jobs in like advertising agencies where I felt like the work I was doing was not meaningful. It was not making a positive impact. You're just selling cars or selling stuff, right? Anyway, so once I started Lavender, I started to get a really good feeling in my heart. Like this feels aligned. This could be it, right? You'll know when you find that thing because it will feel right. Everything will feel aligned. So before I started Lavender, I told you guys that I was pursuing music and I truly thought that that was the path. I thought that was what I wanted to do. But 
the truth is I was still in stage three. I was exploring, testing, and trying it out because what I learned from pursuing music was, although I love music, I didn't like the idea of touring. I didn't like physically going from place to place, lugging equipment from place to place, going to someplace new and performing every single weekend. Like that was exhausting for me because I'm an introvert. I want to stay home. (laughs) I don't want to carry heavy things. And that was a part that I was like, okay, well, the reality of an artist, like they, they perform, right? <laughs> They tour. They're they're not at home for months at a time sometimes. So so that is an example of stage three, exploring and learning and realizing that was not the thing to stage four. Once I found Lavender, it became more aligned and it felt more clear like, oh, this, this could work. And so once I felt that this could work, I got this drive, this motivation to like pour my heart and energy into it. I think I worked on the Lavender YouTube for one year. And then one year later, I quit like the part-time job that I had. And I went full, all in, full-time 2015. And it's funny because 2015, I made $0 in income because I was working full-time on building this new YouTube channel. But yeah, these were the years where I was committed. I was working super hard, being super consistent, creating every single week, just doing everything I can to learn and improve in order to succeed. So stage four could be really short for some people. It could be really long for other people. You might feel like you've been hustling for years and years, right? Before you actually get there, before you get like a taste of what you deem as success. But essentially, this is the stage where you are just putting your all into it because you've decided this is what you want. And this is the stage where I was literally taking all the online courses, going to all these like conventions and summits and just trying to learn as much as I can to be a YouTuber. (laughs) I took it seriously. This is serious focused action. So what you need during this stage is you definitely need self-belief. You need commitment you need determination, you need patience, and you definitely need the growth mindset. If you haven't heard of what the growth mindset is, the growth mindset is the mindset that you are capable of learning and growing and changing and improving. The opposite of growth mindset is the fixed mindset where you believe that you are born with a certain amount of traits, talents, and gifts, and that's all you have. But growth mindset like is the mindset that I can change. I might be born with no musical talent, but I can learn it. I can learn music, right? I can learn these skills and I can improve and I can get better. So obviously when you have a fixed mindset, you are limiting yourself. You're not allowing yourself to explore your potential and reach your full potential. But with the growth mindset is where you fully believe in yourself. You believe that you anything you put your mind to, you can achieve. So you go for it. You, you go hard. So that is stage four. And stage four is really, it takes a lot of energy. Like if you're doing the right thing, that energy should feel natural. It should come to you, like that motivation should come naturally to you. If you feel like you're not naturally motivated, maybe you haven't found that thing that you truly believe in, that you truly are ready to commit fully to. All right, moving on to stage five, level five. And this is the level where you are beginning to have sustainable success. You've reached a level of sustainable income, ideally, and you're exiting out of hustle mode. And this is the stage I call lifestyle design. And this is not to say that stage four has to be hustle mode, right? Doing the thing and focused action can mean different things to different people. But at least in my journey, it was definitely hustle mode. I was working hard to because I, I felt like I had to prove a lot of people wrong. I felt like I had to prove that I could succeed. I had no plan B. Like this YouTube and this business was my only plan and I was going to make it work no matter what. So at least that's what it was for me. Everyone's life is different and we all learn and grow, right? Anyway, stage five, lifestyle design. So I categorize the stage as sustainable and balanced, okay? This is the stage that I am in now. 
And this is the stage where you prioritize balance in your life because your dream life is not just about career. Your dream life encompasses so much more. It encompasses so much more. It encompasses your relationships, your hobbies, your health, your self-care, your finances, money management, how often you travel, what you do in your free time. Like there's so much more to life, right? Than just work and career. So this is the stage where you are optimizing your lifestyle. And this is what I call lifestyle design, what we talk about at Lavendaire. One of the mottos that I love sharing is success at the speed of balance. So it doesn't mean that you're giving up on your pursuit of your career, pursuit of success, but you're just working towards everything in your life, like trying to build a holistic, healthy, beautiful life at the speed of balance. And balance is relative. Sometimes life is imbalanced. It's fine. It's all okay. (laughs) But your ideal is balance, right? So this is where you're figuring out, optimizing your health and self-care routines. It's making time for healing, making time for your wellness, your relationships, your hobbies, free time for yourself, right? Like, are there any goals that you have that have nothing to do with making money, nothing to do with career? Maybe you want to learn a new language. Maybe you want to travel to Machu Picchu. These are like the bucket list items. It's like when you're not worried about surviving and you're not worried about just trying to get to that point of, I need to support myself. If you're at that place where you have a sustainable enough income, you're working towards your dream life. This is where you can start worrying about your bucket list items. Like, what do I want out of life? Like, what do I want to pick up salsa dancing? (laughs) Right? So this is a really fun stage, but there's also some like give and take with this because exiting stage four and going into stage five is a transition. And a lot of it has to do with your mindset because a lot of us are hardwired to be productive and to be achieving, right? If you're anything like me, it's a mindset that's hardwired into you. So exiting stage four, it's kind of a new thing where you have to be okay with not going as fast towards success, not building as fast as you were before, because obviously you want to give time for the fun things in life, other things in life. So this for me was from 2019 to present day, 2023, because it's the period of my career where I felt like I had a sustainable level of success, not saying like I was you know, where I wanted to be, but I was good enough where I could start building a more balanced lifestyle and I could stop like being so stressed out. (laughs) This is my personal journey of unraveling that high achieving mindset, unraveling my self-worth from productivity. I've made plenty of videos on this and I've, I think I've talked about this on the podcast as well, but there was a big part of my life and my mindset that I had to work through not defining my self-worth based on how successful I was, based on the external like view of my life, external validation, any of that. And so this is a very critical stage for me too, because it, it included a lot of healing, a lot of undoing and unlearning releasing these like old beliefs. But it's also really fun too, because you're like past the stage of like stressing to survive, right? I'm sure a lot of you, whether you're in a stressful job or maybe you are in stage four of your dream life, you're hustling and working hard and you feel like, will it ever end, right? Hopefully you get to a point where you feel safe. Hopefully, I hope for you, I wish the best for you that you get to the stage five where you feel secure enough that you're not like so stressed all the time, that you feel secure enough that you could pour into your own self care and your own joy. I'm not saying that you can't do that in stage four, you can definitely do that. But I think for, for a lot of people, it's a mindset thing. For some people, they don't allow themselves to rest. They don't allow themselves to fully have fun and devote their time to their bucket list because they're like, well, I haven't, I haven't achieved this yet. So everyone's going to be different because everyone's life journey is different. But at least for me, this is the stage that I'm in is like figuring out what the balance is of still working towards my career, but also designing and optimizing my ideal life, my ideal lifestyle. So what you need in this stage is 
a lot of self-awareness. You need consistency. You need the abundance mindset. And you need a clear vision for your ideal lifestyle and to be building it. This stage is all about having that abundance mindset of, I can have it all. I can have this thriving, successful career and have time for relationships and have time to travel and have time to like learn a language and have time, right? You you can, you can. You just have to figure out how to work your time to do it. Maybe you work on your projects in phases or I don't know. This is all about designing your daily routines, designing your year, batching things. Like this is one reason why my podcast is going bi-weekly next year is I'm designing my ideal lifestyle. Like I can have my podcast still, but I can also have that extra time for myself or to work towards something else. And I made a really good video about this recently. The video is called How to Design Your Ideal Habits and Routines. The video walks you step-by-step on how to literally design your days and your weeks to include all those ideal habits and routines that you want to do from meditating and journaling and yoga and dance to like including time for your friends and time to cook for yourself, time for self-care, just literally all the things that you ideally want to do, how to actually build it and incorporate it into your life. So I love this topic, lifestyle design. It's, it's a continuous optimizing of your life closer to who you want to be to build that lifestyle that you dream of. Anyway, definitely check out that video. I also share like a free notion template that you can use. So it's called how to design your ideal habits and routines. All right, moving on to the next level. This is number six now. This is the stage where you are working towards financial freedom. This is the stage where you're learning about investing, planning for retirement. Honestly, I put this as number six, but you can start this as soon as you can. You can start this as soon as you start to make any income. I think it's good financial management to learn about investing as early as possible because the earlier you start, the better off you are. But I put this as number six because the focus on this comes after all the things that we mentioned before, right? After you got clear about what you want, you know what the path is, you're working hard, you achieved it, and now you're designing your ideal life and ideal lifestyle. But as you do that, and after you do that, you want to learn how to build your own financial freedom. So what that means is learning how money works, learning how to make money work for you. Because I don't think anybody wants to work out of necessity for the rest of their life. Of course, like maybe you're the type of person that wants to work for fun, even like you never want to retire maybe, but most people want to have a point in their life where they don't want to work as hard. They want to relax a little bit. They want to retire. And the truth is people are living longer and longer. And so it's crucial to plan and to save and have enough invested up until the point where you retire so that you don't run out of money, right? People are living to 100 or even older with the technology and the science that we have now. So think about your financial state and prepare, plan ahead and take care of your future self. For me, I started to learn about investing around 2016. That was the first year I started to make baby amounts of income. And once I started to make like my first big paycheck from my first brand deal, I was like, okay, I got to learn how to invest this. Like, I don't want to spend it all. I want to save some and invest some. And so that's when I got my feet into investing, but actually it was the year 2021 where I truly learning about investing, like watching people on YouTube talk about the economy and finances. It's something that I was never really interested in before that point, but for some reason, maybe the time was right for me in 2021 to, to go deep into learning about investing and all the different ways to build financial freedom. Things like learning about real estate investing and just all this stuff, right? Maybe you're not in the stage yet, but even if you're not at the stage, I think it's so smart to just become aware. It's never too early to learn. Like you can start learning now and then implement it later once you have more income, right? But I think it's just good practice to be aware of investing. Don't be afraid of it because 
everybody needs to learn about this. We all want to not struggle for the rest of our lives. We all want to have a point in our lives where we can choose not to work, right? We can choose to work if we want, and we can choose not to work if we don't want to. And I truly want that for every single person listening to this because I want you to reach your dream life. I want you to have like abundance in your life. I want you to have financial abundance. So this is huge. This is something to focus on after you've figured out your career, but it's also a good idea to learn about it at any point in your journey. Moving on to level seven. So this stage is called when money doesn't matter anymore then what? So this is a fun stage to think about because this is the stage where you have reached financial freedom, which is what we talked about in stage six, right? So imagine you've invested a lot of money, you have financial freedom, and I define that as your money makes enough money for you to live without you working at all. So imagine a life where you don't have to work for money, you have enough money invested that it just grows at a rate, it gives you enough income just from those dividends and from that growth, right? And so what do you do in this point in your dream life where you have the financial freedom and money doesn't matter anymore? Then what? So this is the stage where you live for joy. You live for fulfillment, whatever that means to you. You work if you want. You don't work if you don't want to. Maybe you want to travel. Maybe you want to volunteer. Maybe you just want to spend all your time on all your hundred hobbies, or maybe you have one hobby that you go really deep into like fishing or painting, right? Maybe this is a time to focus more on your family and your friendships. Maybe you pick up projects, like you write a book, like literally you just do whatever you want to do. You live life based on your own joy, following your joy and following what fulfills you. So in this stage, you know, nobody can just do nothing. Like you're going to be doing something. I'm a believer that humans like are inclined to create and we're inclined to challenge ourselves and to grow. And that's where we find fulfillment in life. If you don't grow, you're going to start to feel, I don't know, really lazy and really terrible about yourself. It's not that fun. Like it's not fun to do nothing for too long. So this is a time where maybe you want to find new ways to grow and expand yourself simply for the fulfillment of it. You want to find new challenges that you choose to work on. So the key to this level is choice. Everything is a choice. You don't have to do anything anymore. It's all what you choose to do. Like you don't have to work your money's already taken care of. Like you don't have to show up for anyone. You do what you want. Everyone has a level of responsibility regardless, right? You probably have some responsibility to your spouse, to your family, to your kids at this point, but still like you have enough freedom and space to follow your joy and follow what fulfills you. And I think that's great. I want all of us to reach number seven, stage number seven. Let's get there. <laughs> All right, so moving on to the last stage, the last level that I will share today, and that is number eight. And this is the stage in life where you are giving back in some way. And I say this is level eight, but really this can happen in any of the previous stages. I'm not saying you can't give back at any stage of your journey, but truly what comes after, like you don't have to worry about money. You don't have to worry about anything. You can live like based on your joy and fulfillment. What comes after that? Probably like just giving back because you have so much, right? Like you have so much love, so much joy poured into your own life and into your own cup that it is inevitable that you're gonna spread that and give that back to others. I just feel like it's something that will naturally happen. And because giving back is so fulfilling, like it's part of that journey. So when I say giving back, it could be tangible or intangible, right? It could be donating your money, donating your time, providing services for others, just being there for the people in your life is giving back, right? There are so many ways to give back that this is really a flexible stage. And like I said, it can really happen throughout the journey, but once you have everything, you're fulfilled like you're living your dream life, you're probably just going to naturally give back, right? So anyway, I see that as the final level of creating your dream life is that you're there and then you're just sharing, you're helping others. But 
honestly, at all stages, you are continuously fine-tuning, right? You're always improving. There's always challenges and new challenges to overcome, new lessons to learn. So that is not going to stop. Like you're going to continue growing and learning the rest of your life. So throughout all the stages, you're reflecting, improving, growing, you're aligning and realigning to what you truly desire. It doesn't end. It's like you're driving down this continuous road to the end of your life (laughs) and you're continuously steering yourself closer and closer to who you are, what you desire. I think as you grow, you become more and more your authentic self and you honor your authentic self and your authentic desires and those dreams. And then you also play a part in designing and creating what you envision the ideal world to be. Maybe this happens even before this last stage, but you start to think about what do I want to see differently in this world? What can I create? How can I improve the world around me? How can I improve the people around me? And that is where you start maybe building new projects, new businesses. Maybe you just start a nonprofit. I I have no idea. There's an infinite number of ways that you can express this, the stage of giving back and helping others, helping the world, designing your ideal world, (laughs) contributing to your vision of what your ideal world is. Another thing to note about all of these stages is that throughout this journey of creating your dream life, you are naturally going to be inspiring others to do the same. So there's this energy that you exude when you believe in yourself and when you are going after your dreams, like that energy is contagious and the people around you will feel it and it is inspiring. So just you stepping forward on this journey is naturally going to create a positive ripple effect for the people around you to also do this with their lives as well. Like when you're creating your dream life and the people around you see you doing it, they're going to want to create their dream life too. Cause they're like, Oh my God, that looks so fun. Like, look at her being bold. Look at her going after what she wants. Look at her believing in herself. Look how confident she is. Look how much fun she's having. Look how much love and joy that she's exuding. So that energy is so naturally contagious like you doing this is naturally helping the world. (laughs) You're naturally inspiring other people to do the same. And I think that is a beautiful journey to be on. We're all on this journey in some way, shape or form. But yeah, let me know what you thought about these eight levels (laughs) to creating your dream life. What level are you in? I would love to hear. I wish there was a comment feature on podcast, but maybe you can comment on my Instagram post. I'll mention this podcast on Instagram and you can let me know what level of your dream life are you in? Like I told you guys, I am in level five. And for the past couple of years, I was trying like in that awkward transition, going from level four to level five, because it was so different. It was so new to me to not be in hustle mode, right? To realize, oh, I can calm down. I can relax and I can build my ideal lifestyle while like pursuing my dreams. So yeah. All right. (laughs) That's it for today. Before I go today, make sure you check out the 2024 Artist of Life workbook. It is our number one guided journal to help you create your dream life. And it takes you through the year. So this is for 2024. It'll help you reflect on the past year, plan your new year. It'll help you plan your goals every single month and review how you did every single month. So it keeps you accountable towards your goals. It keeps you accountable towards reaching your dream life. And it is just an invaluable tool to have as you are on this dream life journey. Another thing I want to share is I am hosting two new year workshops. So I'm hosting one in December and one in January. The one in December will help you reflect on the past year and wrap up this year with a guided meditation and a lot of journaling sessions. Like we're going to be together live on Zoom and we're going to be journaling and reflecting together and meditating together. And then in January is the other live online event. And that workshop is going to be a goals and mindset workshop. So the reason I chose to do that workshop is a lot of people set goals and then they fall off a couple months into the new year and they forget about their goals. They get lazy. They 
sink back into their comfort zones. And so this workshop will teach you how to have the mindset to stay consistent, how to have that positive success mindset to truly achieve your goals in the year. And I'll be sharing just all the techniques and strategies to stay consistent and committed to your goals. So that one's a really good one happening January 12th. You can find these events at lavendaire.com slash events. Basically these two workshops is like one ticket. It's a buy one, get two workshops bundle basically. And then for the workbook, you can find that at lavendaire.com slash workbook easy peasy. And finally, reminding you again that this podcast will return in the spring, March 24th, 2024. So see you in the new year. I will talk to you then. Until then, you can find me on YouTube and Instagram. I'll still be active at Lavender. Sending you so much love and wishing you a happy new year. I hope 2024 brings amazing new opportunities and so much abundance into your life in all areas of your life. And I will see you next year. Talk to you next year. Bye.